But if I was doing this on the stairs, there's more lighting there. Let's see if we can talk to you guys for two minutes. I want to open the scriptures and show you um, the scriptures that are not so popular that most um, churches don't read. Um, and I want you to take these scriptures and go and search them. The scriptures I'm going to show you, I want you to go search them. Pray, ask the Holy Spirit to open your mind, open your heart, um, and show you the meaning. Well, firstly, I greet you, greet you all. Uh, please, if you can hear me, do confirm that you, you can hear me. Those who are here to, to stay and you can actually hear me, let me know. Um, if you can hear me, please confirm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Dan. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, Bazalan. So, Bazalan, here's the thing. Uh, there's a difference between... Uh, thank you, up here. Thank you. There's a difference between interpreting scripture through philosophy, through uh, theology, philosophy, tradition of men, and interpreting scriptures or interpreting scripture by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Okay, okay. There's a difference between interpreting scripture through philosophy, through theology, through traditions of men, through church doctrines, and interpreting scripture by the perspective and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Those are two different things. All right. For example, in Jim, Guno Koko, Nom Kulu, you know, who used to preach Vanilla Lakdala, uh, who are not as educated as our current seven, um, ministers are right now, um, who can tell you the Hebrew and the Greek and the history and the, uh, you know, decode the, 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 the scripture. Um, yet they were able to still know what the Lord is saying scriptures they were still able to decode it by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit others did not know English uh, but they were able to hear the accurate interpretation of scripture because the Holy Spirit gave them the ability the Holy Spirit gave them the wisdom all right um, but now what you notice is People put a lot of intelligence when it comes to interpretation of scripture. Um, you know, people put a lot of intelligence, they put a lot of philosophy. Maybe let me sit this side. They put a lot of philosophy when it comes to the interpretation of scripture. And they put a lot of, uh, we, we try to be deep, so deep that we, we even confuse God himself. <laughs> When, when God is listening to what uh, uh, we are saying or what we, we, our conclusion on what the scripture is saying, uh, even God himself is shocked. 
Even God himself is shocked. How? Is that what the scriptures means? And, you know, we, we want to be so deep. We want to correct Paul. We want to correct Peter. We want to correct... Every time a scripture um, is... is um, it, it wants to kill our flesh. Um, I'm not sure if my network is still uh, strong where I am. Please keep commenting so I can know if my network is still okay. You know, we, 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 we want to every time a certain instruction in scripture uh, wants, wants to kill our flesh, it makes our, our flesh uncomfortable. Uh, we then want to lower it down to suit our needs and to suit our feelings. Uh, you see, blessing, uh, God bless you. Uh, we, we, we always want to water it down and say, no, they didn't mean this, they meant that. Um, so that our congregation is happy. We keep our congregation happy. And uh, we also don't want to offend the, the host. You know, if you are a guest and a win, uh, where you are invited, you don't want to uh, offend the host. So you do everything in your power. Uh, you want to do everything in your power to be safe, to not offend. All right? Um, oh, my God. You want to protect your relationships. So... We want to protect relationships, you know, covenant relationships, more than we want to please Jesus. So we would rather protect the envelope, but lose Jesus. And so, why is that? Why is that? Uh, we, 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 in the last days, people will be lovers of themselves. They will be obsessed with self, obsessed with how they feel, obsessed. Uh, in, in fact, when the scripture talks about, you know, um, self-denial, uh, we want to talk about self-love, you know, to the extreme, to the extreme. Um, let, me, let me read the scriptures to you. Um, I want you to go and check these scriptures by the Holy Spirit. Before I give you these scriptures, you know people like to say the, the Bible is the final authority. Tina, we want to follow the scripture. The scripture is the final authority. Okay, but the question is, how do you interpret scripture? Which laws do you use to interpret scripture? Are you interpreting scripture by the leading of the spirit or you are interpreting scripture by philosophy. Some, you know, you, you are interpreting scripture. Thank you so much for following me. You are interpreting scripture by what the pastor said. So if something has not been revealed to your pastor, you, you automatically believe that it's wrong. It, it, God is not approving it. Um, so I can give you five scriptures, ten scriptures on a topic. But you see, if your interpretation of scripture is defiled you will hear what you want to hear you will not hear what what God intended in that scripture oh guys let me stop here let me let me pause a bit uh, I, please say something say something am, am, am I am I clear do, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying I five people can sit here quoting scriptures all of them different interpretations based on how they feel based on their environment, the influence of their environment, the influence of their, you know, of their Bible school, the influence of who they listen to, the influence of their mentor. But very few people interpret scripture by the leading of the Holy Spirit. There, there comes a time, Barcelona, where you have to put aside, put away all the tools that you, you, you got from school on Bible interpretation. There comes a time when you have to open the scriptures and say, Holy Spirit, I have an idea on what the scripture means. I have an idea based on... Uh, ah, did I forget this now? I have an idea on what the scripture might mean based on um, this and this and that. But open it to me. Open the real meaning. Reveal 
the true meaning of this particular scripture. A pure God bless you. Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? There comes a time when you have to put aside the fact that you are an apostle, the fact that you are a prophet, the fact that you've been preaching for 20, 30 years, and you, you then say, Lord, open the scriptures to me and show you what you meant. Open the scripture to me and show me what you meant. Show me what you meant by this. Because, Basara, let me tell you, that is how seducing spirits have come to authentic men of God, authentic servants of God, and they creep in and they twist the doctrine. Oh, my Lord. And you see, when these seducing spirits come, they don't come um, in a way that is too obvious. They are very intelligent. These are spirits that come with so much intelligence. And you see, here you are dealing with even principalities and powers that know how to seduce you and bring you to a place, you know, of satanic conviction, where you have wrong conviction, defiled convictions. These are satanic convictions. These are satanic manipulations that have come to seduce you into a wrong doctrine, seduce you into, um, you know, a wrong spirit. And, and that is how, you know, different doctrines were, were where we were formed and, and that is how you have your chambers that's why you have your your muslim movement these are, some of them will even confirm would an angel appear to them in a form of an angel of light that angel appeared and seduced them and 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 manipulated their minds and brought them to a place where they twisted doctrine and they misinterpreted the, the scriptures and, um, and because of that, they are now misleading the people they are leading. They are misleading the people they are leading. So you, you now have a, a, a man, a, a servant of God, who's leading, who's leading 5,000 people, but he's taking all of them to hell. And, and the people think just because the church is big, it means God is happy. Oh, Lord, help us. Help us, Father. Help us, Lord. Help us. Give us grace, Lord, to understand your word. Hey, Loki, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Give us grace to understand. Give us grace to understand your word. Uh, here's this person in Krumanai. That's my daughter. Okay, come. Hi, hey, man. Why is this camera like this now? Hi. How are you doing? I'm good, good. You feeling better now? Mm-hmm. Okay. But I'm still talking with you. Shall be well, let's go on. Okay. I'm going to pray for you again. Please, can you bring me that, that, uh, that earphones thing? Airpods. Yeah, yeah. I want, it, I want it to be close. Thank you. Okay. Mm. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Who is, who is still with me here? Who, who can still hear me? Almost done. I should be out by ten past three. By ten past three, I should leave. Uh, who is following? Who is following? Who is following what I'm saying? Who is following what I'm saying here? Um, blessing. God bless you. Apiwe. God bless you. Sipogazi. God bless you. Thank you so much. You, you see, give us a lot. And, and you see, then, God bless you, uh, Matlangu. God bless you, man of God. Mazalan, you, you see, it's, it, it's, it's, it's easy to miss heaven. How do you miss heaven? Get the wrong doctrine. You have missed heaven. Thank you. Man. If you get a wrong doctrine, you have missed heaven. You know, one of the things the Lord put in my heart was, was that while the church of Jesus was still looking at um, false prophets. We told false prophets, they are selling water, they are doing this. What the church did not realize is that false uh, teachers 
were being manipulated or, or authentic teachers were being manipulated and being or rather manipulated into and seduced into false teaching and false doctrine. Do you hear what I'm saying? While the church was focusing on, you know, Bushir, this, Bushir, that, the, the, the authentic servants of God were being seduced by spirits, principalities, and powers into wrong doctrine, into doctrines of devils. And how do you know these doctrines of devils? They excite the flesh. And what about the, the authentic doctrine of God? They, it, it kills the flesh. The doctrine of God breaks you. It makes you uncomfortable. It brings you, when a, when a preacher is preaching, you, you see, you see right now, when you have a conference and a prophet is coming, people ex are excited when a prophet is coming to their church. Oh, there's a prophet in our conference. You know, we are excited. God is about to, to locate us and tell us uh, where our money is. But you see, an, an authentic prophet from the Bible times, when a prophet comes, people would be scared because a prophet would come not just to declare the love of God, but the judgment of God. So now very few prophets are, are prophesying the judgment of God. Why? Because the, there has been that manipulation on doctrine. Conference after conference, you hear messages, you know, uh, your, your money is coming, you, you are coming out of this, you are victorious, uh, God loves you. There is an overemphasis on the love of God and less on the wrath of God. So now you have a generation that knows the love of God but does not understand the wrath of God. Because you see, God, God is, doesn't just have one side. He's got love but he's got judgment. If we, if we disobey God, a time comes when his judgment will be enforced. I do these teachings in our group on WhatsApp. Please, if you want to be in that group, uh, inbox me. I will add you in our WhatsApp uh, uh, group. And then we can have uh, sessions on Microsoft Teams or on Zoom um, where we give more teachings on this so we can go deep and understand. Because people just hear you talk about you know, uh, uh, holiness and they think you, know, you are just being legalistic. I want to show you that there is warfare that is taking place. And the, this is a warfare of doctrine. This is a warfare of doctrine. If you, if you thought war, warfare was just people vomiting and rolling on the floor, you don't understand. That's one aspect of it. But there is an aspect of doctrine, of, of warfare, where doctrine is fought, doctrine is manipulated, so that people miss heaven. Because if people have, have the wrong doctrine, they are going to violate the law of God, and they're, they're not going to make it to heaven. And so, um, please check out these scriptures. I'm about, I'm about to read to you one, two, three, four, five, six scriptures. I want you to go ask the Holy Spirit to open these scriptures to you and give you understanding. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. If you want to be in that WhatsApp group so that we can give you links to you know, the, the, the sessions we're going to have. Um, The GOP and religious leaders are rushing to codify child marriage, and I have the yo. Okay, that's strange. That is very strange. Yo, uh, First Timothy chapter two verse twelve. Check out that scripture. First Peter chapter three verse three. Uh, Ezekiel chapter seven verse nineteen. When you read the scriptures, don't assume you know what it means. That's the problem. Most of us, when we approach scripture, we approach it with a know-it-all mentality and we approach scripture with pride. There's that thing, you would, I'm from, uh, I have a PhD in theology, uh, you know, I have a master's in philosophy, and therefore I know what scripture, I've been preaching for 20 years. My friend, you know nothing. Humble yourself. There comes a time, especially on issues of holiness, you have to humble yourself and ask the Lord to open your understanding to scriptures. Ezekiel 7 verse 19, Hosea chapter 2 verse 2, Jeremiah 4 verse 30, Jeremiah 4 verse 30, Hosea 2 verse 2, Ezekiel 7 verse 19, 1 Peter 3 verse 3, 1 Timothy 2 verse 12, and 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. I have to go now. Please check out those scriptures, and those of you who want to be in our group, 
um, let me know. And our manual is also available, uh, a manual I wrote on holiness. In fact, the, the manual is titled, Jesus' Letter to the Modern Church. That's the title of that, of that uh, manual, Jesus' Letter to the Modern Church. And it, it is my desire that every believer should read that manual. Um, God bless you, Pastor, I have to leave now. Uh, see you in, in, um, in the WhatsApp group, those who will be. Jeremiah 4, verse 30. Let me read the scriptures again, and then I go. Uh, that was Jeremiah 4, verse 30. Jeremiah 4, verse 30. Hosea chapter 2, verse 2. Um, Ezekiel 7, verse 19. Uh, 1 Peter 3, verse 3. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. And 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. God bless you all, Bazalwane. Please, Bazalwane, let's let's seek the Lord, especially on issues of holiness. Um, one can be one can serve God all their life, and in the last day, they get dis, uh, disqualified and not make it to heaven. That's why Jesus said, "Many, many will say, Lord, Lord, in Your name, we did this and that," and He will say, "Get away from me, uh, or rather, depart from me, you workers of iniquity." These were born again people. These were power generals in the armies of, of Jehovah. Yet Jesus said, you workers of iniquity. You have to find out why did God, Jesus, call them workers of iniquity. How can people who are filling stadiums, winning souls, uh, raising the dead, how can Jesus call them workers of iniquity? You have to find out why he said that. A lot of people think, no, just because you're a Christian, you're going to make it to heaven. No, not every Christian is going to make it to heaven. It's those who do the will of the Father. But you see, the will of the Father has to be decoded by the Spirit. It has to be revealed by the Spirit. The will, the true will of the Father, philosophy and theology is limited. It, it, the will of the true will of the Father, the true order of the Father is hidden in the Holy Spirit.